Syrian people in general, some say. Some U.S. military assets already in the general area, others being moved into position, all there awaiting orders from President Obama. Well, these are very busy days for Senator Menendez. The chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee says he's staying in very close touch with the Obama administration as the president prepares to decide on a possible attack against Syria. And that decision is of great concern to more Cyril Afram Karim, the Archbishop of the Syriac Orthodox Church for the Eastern United States. By the way, he is based in Teaneck. Uh, Your Eminence, we welcome you to the program. This decision, uh, we have talked to other uh, sections of the Syrian community who have been profoundly in favor of this. You're not. Thank you for having me. No, I'm not, and I speak for many Syrians, both Muslim and Christians, who are finding these attacks uh, a destruction of, of the Syrian country, society, and community. Uh, we, uh, as Christians, of course, we are always uh, peace-loving people. We want peace at any cost, and we do not want war at any cost. Uh, we do not accept any kind of violence, whether by the regime or the opposition, but we don't see the solution as being attacking the country and destroying the livelihood of many people. They are already suffering. They are already uh, suffering from lack of food, of, med of medicine. And, but as uh, you know, sir, many accuse the the president, uh, President Assad, of being the cause for that. Do you agree with that or not? I cannot judge, based, uh, being who I am, an Archbishop of the Church, but I can tell you uh, that uh, they should come up with uh, proof that he is behind this chemical attack. And what you've heard thus far, you don't, you don't see as proof? I don't see as a proof. I listened to President Obama yesterday, and he did not give us a proof. He said, uh, I, uh, I understood from him that the opposition, so-called opposition, is not uh, capable of doing it, therefore the regime should uh, have done it. That's not a proof for me. That's you, not a proof. My understanding also is that the Assad regime has been relatively uh, beneficent, uh, benevolent towards the Christian community, which is not typical in much of the Mideast these days where Christians have been persecuted far and wide. Uh, does that play into the equation? Are you, are you more worried about the, the, the people that, for instance, Mayor Khairula refers to as the freedom fighters, you don't see them as freedom fighters, do I you? don't see them because what I see, what I hear there is that uh, people as f affiliated with the Al-Qaeda, groups affiliated with Al-Qaeda, killing both Christians and Muslims, attacking churches and mosques, destroying uh, homes of Christians, uh, kidnapping. We have two archbishops who have been kidnapped since April 22nd. Two prominent people, two prominent personalities in their community and, in, and worldwide. We hear nothing about them. You and believe they were kidnapped by forces allied with the, the rebels in Syria? Yes, we believe because there is a testimony of a person who was with them and he confirmed that they were from Chechen origin. Mm -hmm. There are people from Chechnya, from Uzbekistan, mm -hmm. from all over the world fighting uh, in Syria, doing jihad, and even from United States of America and mm -hmm. Europe, hundreds of people from Europe are fighting there. So these two archbishops were kidnapped, and we really like to hear about their abouts. And we appeal to the U.S. administration and to others to tell us if they know anything about them, whether they are alive or not, whether they're in good, good, good condition or not. And uh, we are very worried not only about that, because their kidnapping is a message basically to all Christians that you, you are not welcome in this land. What happens what? If, if President Assad is toppled? What happens to Christians in Syria? Uh, what happened to them in Iraq and in other countries. Uh, out of 1.5 1 million Christians in Iraq, how many are left there? 300, 350,000? Mm -hmm. Christians in the Middle East be, have been there for 2,000 years since the beginning of Christianity, and now we are really worried that these Christian presence, which is good not only for Christianity, but for the whole region, because mm -hmm. they've always been a source of uh, enlightenment, of uh, knowledge and so forth, and they help build that civilization. Now a time will come when they are driven out of their homelands and uh, forced one way or another to leave. That is very worrying to all of us. You use the word homeland. Syria yes. is your homeland. It is. I was born in Syria, and my homeland is not only Syria, it's the whole Middle East, because we, I come from the Syriac Aramaic mm. race, which were uh, one day uh, the population uh, made up the of the whole region, so it is my homeland, and it will continue to be. Where this is my adopted land, of course, but Syria is my homeland. It must, yes. be, it must be heartbreaking for you. It is for me and for many people. I have family, but I'm not talking about personally here. I'm talking about the country itself, about the Christian and Muslims. We live together for 1,500 years peacefully. Now, neighbors 
are not able to look to see eye to eye to each other. That's very worrying. Your Eminence, we will talk some more, sir. We thank you for coming in. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, the Syrian situation has now injected itself into the U.S. Senate race in New Jersey. A spokesman for Democrat Cory Booker issued a statement this afternoon saying the U.N. weapons inspectors should be given enough time to do their job so that if the president decides to act with our allies, there is strong international support for our actions. The Republican Senate candidate Steve Lonigan is now speaking out against the strike in Syria. He joins us as well. We appreciate your coming on in. Uh, there was, when I heard uh, some of the statements you made this morning, there was no vagueness about it. You don't want us going in. No, Mike, I think it's a big mistake to, for us to go into Syria without a strategic plan and without a specific military outcome and a plan to achieve that outcome. To simply go into Syria for what they call a punitive measure, a punitive bombing to show the rest of the world that we're not happy with uh, Assad is actually more destructive than doing nothing. When you take a look at the images that we mm -hmm. see of, of men, women, and children who are obviously victimized by, by something that certainly looks symptomatically like uh, exposure to chemical weapons. Uh, the world says it does call for something, doesn't it? It's horrible. It absolutely is. And uh, the world should be prepared to investigate thoroughly and take appropriate action at the right time. However, there's three things that we can do in Syria. You can go in there with the objective of destroying the current regime and establishing a whole new government. That's a whole all-out war that's going to have devastating consequences to the population of Syria, cost in American troop lives and other troops, and cost to our taxpayers, and then, of course, the cost of building a new government. The second thing is to go in and attempt to take out uh, Assad's ability to use chemical weapons. That takes highly precise use of rocketry uh, str uh, and, and tactical assault, and if we do it wrong, it could actually be devastating. See, if we use just Tomahawk missiles and we don't do it properly, you could actually disperse chemicals into the air and make things worse. The third thing is what uh, Bob Menendez is talking about, and that's a punitive measure, where they're just going to show the rest of the world that we're going to punish Assad. What that means is we go in, we lob some Tomahawk missiles in, we create additional chaos, that means more death, more destruction, and in many ways empowering the Al-Qaeda-based rebels to be even more destructive. And, you know, Archbishop Kareem of the Syrian Which Orthodox Church, yes. who I've met with on a number of occasions, and spent time with, as well as many of the Syrian refugees, are deeply concerned that that will empower those rebels that are coming in through Turkey and other countries uh, to be even more aggressive in harming and killing Christians in but Syria. But if we end up, if the UN inspectors are allowed to finish their job in four or five days, if they do clear out of there and they do come back with a report, say there is no doubt that the initial intelligence reports are accurate. There is no doubt that the Assad regime, regime was the one responsible for the use of these weapons. There's no doubt that the blood is on their hands. What do, what do we as the leader of the free world do? Then we move in with the rest of the, because we're not the only people involved. Uh, the rest of the, uh, the world needs to take part in this. It should not just fall on the, the shoulders of the American taxpayer. We should move in there, conduct a complete and thorough investigation, and I doubt that can be done in a few days, um, and then take the necessary action in terms of reprimanding, uh, removing Assad perhaps, but through peaceful ways by working with um, other countries, not simply by lobbing bombs into Syria. You Again, we, we they've even, you, know, you know, Mike, they've even said that even if they find out that he's done this, they're still just going to take punitive measures. Mm -hmm. They're still not saying, okay, we've just discovered that Assad did this. Are we going to go in with an all-out war, a whole other war for this country, which I'm adamantly opposed to, um, to take this guy out? And the answer is no. They just want to do what they call punitive measures, which is going to bring more chaos. Let me talk to you about the campaign. FTU poll numbers came out today. Uh, shows you, with, as, as of the last poll among registered voters, uh, with 22 percent, Cory Booker with 50 percent. Well, this, this poll is from FDU. It's a push-button poll amongst everybody who they get picks up the telephone. It's a complete nonsense poll. It, it's not a those real Those numbers poll. don't, you don't no, find those, those are, those, those, This is a remarkably different election than any election you've ever seen. It's going to be held on a Wednesday in October. It's amongst very likely voters. It's amongst voters who are totally tuned into elections. It's not just some FDU poll where they randomly call people up in the phone book and ask yes or no questions. That's you, no way to poll. Do you think, in fact, it's kind of irresponsible do, polling. Do you, irresponsible? Yeah, it's irresponsible polling. Do you think that this brouhaha over the manicure, pedicure, homophobia thing, do you think that hurts you at all? Uh, I want to focus on the issues that our nation is confronting right now. Those issues are a potential war in Syria that we should not engage in. Uh, the fact that we have economic issues that concern me deeply uh, right now in this country. We have an economy being... Uh, boistered up by the Federal Reserve Bank printing of American currency at an unbelievable rate. And by the way, if we launch another war, they're going to have to print more new American dollars to do that. But we have the Obama health care bill. But still, I mean, it's, there are those who say 
Lonigan is a man of ideas. That mm -hmm. I knew those ideas to be taken seriously. But some of the things that, that have been, you know, you, you, your critics are saying the governor should disavow his endorsement of you, that the governor should walk away from you. Uh, they didn't like the tweet which you disavowed. Mm -hmm. they, they, they feel uncomfortable with, with uh, this remark about what is a man. Um, do you think you're getting a raw deal from the press? First of all, I didn't make any remark about what is a man. What I said is I'm very content just being a guy, and, uh, and that's my position. I, I don't understand all this silly rhetoric about whether Cory Booker's gay or not. He's playing some game in the Washington Post. He, he likes the rumors whether he's gay or not. This is all a diversion from the real issues, Mike. Who's the issue, the who, issue who, here isn't is, whether or not Cory Booker is gay or straight. The fact is that Cory Booker is too liberal for New Jersey, and we can't afford to have him bring his failed policies that are destroying Newark to the federal level. Well, that's you, the issue that matters to me. Do you think he's using this to try to undercut you in some way? I think it's a diversionary tactic because there's some big issues in front of us right now. The war in Syria, economic policy issues, Obama health. So he'd rather move the issue to a, a, a campaign over his, you know, Hollywood lifestyle and about him. I want it to be about the issues. Mayor Lonigan, always a pleasure, so thank you for coming in. Thanks, Mike. Cops versus cops.